capacity for abstract thought and the freedom to choose what to do or think. What he decides to do may be a subjective choice, a matter of personal preference. What he enjoys may be the result of his taste or education. But there are certain cases where there is, like it or not, no choice, where facts are facts and quite inescapable. Here, the computer is man's newest tool. In the Industrial Revolution, machines multiplied the power of his hands. Today, the computer can provide an enormous extension of his mental powers. But to use such a revolutionary tool properly, it must be understood, seen in perspective. Humans are artistic, fallible, inventive, original. Their capacities are tremendous. But in the realm of facts, where there is only one possible answer, where there is no question of judgment or opinion, and where human qualities such as imagination and foresight are not required, computers are a priceless tool. Computers deal with numbers, and the complex calculations they carry out are the result of their ability to do many simple, ordinary sums with speed and accuracy. They can store numbers until required. And they can also do simple logical operations such as selection. For example, they can determine which is the larger of two numbers. or the numbers larger than 13 can be separated from those that are smaller. It seems extraordinary that with such a limited number of abilities, computers can do so much. Yet, the letters of the alphabet can express the whole of human knowledge. A computer is a straightforward, everyday machine. A simple way of studying the principle of how it works is to reduce it to five basic functions. First, there is a means of input, which we will symbolize by a pair of spectacles. Next, there is a memory, or store, which we show as a bank of numbered slots. All instructions and data being worked on are stored here. Then there is the calculating function, symbolized by a desk adding machine. Fourth is the computer output. A typewriter is the symbol for this. Lastly, there is a control unit, represented here by a numbered dial. All five functions can, of course, be carried out by people, a human computer, so to speak. In studying the principles, the first point is that a computer is quite dead. It can do nothing without someone to give instructions. The instructions our computer can deal with are few and quite simple. The first one tells the computer to store a given number in a specific slot. But this is rather clumsy. Let us write it more briefly. The next instruction is to add two numbers in the store and then return the answer to the store. Again, it can be shortened. Similarly, computers can be instructed to subtract, multiply, and divide. A further essential instruction is to print out the result. And the final instruction is stop. A 
selection from these instructions can be used to solve any problem that this computer can tackle. Such a list of instructions is called a program. Consider how a program can be worked out to solve a simple problem. Here is a family of four. The individual ages are known. The problem is to find out the average age. First, all the information, the data as it's called, is put into store. The first child's age in slot one, and so on. The number of people in the family is stored in slot five. Computers can only add two numbers at a time, so a running total of the ages must be made. First, the two children's ages in slots one and two are added together. Next, mother's age is added to the total. Then father's age. The next step is to divide the total ages, which is now in slot one of the store, by the number in the family, which is in slot five. Instruction number 10 is necessary to obtain the required answer from the computer. And finally, stop. These 11 instructions make up a complete, if very simple, program. One that could be handled by our human computer. The computer comes alive when the operator supplies it with a set of instructions, or program as it's called. Each component has a separate function and only acts when told to by the controller. In this simplified computer, the reader is reading out the program instructions step by step and passing the data to the storer, who puts it in its appointed slots. The controller must know what part of the program is being worked on, so he clicks up his counter at every instruction. Now all the data has been stored and a running total of the ages is being made. Only two numbers are added at one time. When all the ages have been added, the controller gives the next instruction to divide the total by four, the number in the family. The printer is then ordered to print the result. final instruction is stop. For such a small problem, our human computer is more than adequate. A more realistic problem, a computer-sized one, would be to find out the average age of the whole human race. Assume that we have a list of every single individual age. At the end of the list is put the population total, three billion. The program could start Store the first age in slot one, store the next age in two, add them together and store in slot one. Store the next age in slot two, and so on. But note how the program is repeating itself. There is a similar instruction for storing each age. And another repetitive one for adding it to the total. The complete program will have more than six billion such instructions and will be totally unmanageable. A drastic way of shortening it must be found. First, all the ages can be removed from the store, except the two that are actually being worked on. Then, instead of a separate repetitive instruction on how to deal with each age, all instructions after the third 
are replaced by a new general one, which returns the computer to instruction two, ready to add in another age. The next instruction uses the ability of computers to select from alternative courses of action. A number over 999 can't be a human age, so this instruction is not acted upon as the ages are totaled. Putting it after instruction two means that only when the population total, which is larger than 999, turns up, will the computer move on to the next instruction. This is to divide the total ages in slot one by the population total in slot two. The answer, the average age of the human race, is stored in slot one. The next instruction is to print the answer. And finally, stop. By using a stored program, only eight instructions enable a computer to work out the average age of three billion people. Our human computer could take this eight instruction program and carry out the job. But as each age takes about 30 seconds to add up, even if everyone works at the maximum possible speed, it will not help very much. It is inconceivable that such techniques could cope with the huge volume of information that has to be processed today. A satellite is one of the most rapidly moving mechanical objects that man has produced. But even this takes about 90 minutes for a journey round the Earth. An electric pulse takes about a third of a second for the trip. Clearly, electric pulses are one solution to the problem of designing a really fast computer. Most electrical devices can be in two states. A bulb is on or off. A voltage is present or absent. A current is flowing or not. A magnetic field is in one direction or in the opposite. A switch is off or on. Man has ten fingers and long ago found it convenient to tally things in groups of ten. This is the basis of the decimal system which uses ten digits from zero through to nine. Any number written in the decimal system means so many ones, five of them, so many tens, so many hundreds, that is, ten by tens, so many thousands, that is, ten by ten by tens, and so on. If an octopus were to study mathematics, he would naturally use the octal system, that is, counting in eights, using the numbers from zero to seven. For the number humans call 85, he would write one, two, five. One, two, five in octal means five ones, two eights, 164, that is 8 by 8, total 85. Any calculation that can be done in decimal mathematics can be carried out equally well in octal. Electricity has only two fingers, so to speak, off and on. So for electronic computers, it is most convenient to use the binary system with only two digits, zero, and one. What we call 13 is written 1101 in binary. 11, one, no twos, 14, that is two by two, 18, that is two by two by two. Clearly, 13 can be represented by four bulbs, on, on, off, on. 
Similarly, current flowing or not flowing can be used. Or magnetism, one way or the opposite. Any of these electrical states can represent 13 or any other number. If the letters of the alphabet are given numbers to represent them, the numbers can, of course, be written in binary. The binary numbers, in turn, can be shown by light bulbs, on or off. Thus, Roma can be written out in 14 light bulbs. In this way, it is possible to put names or written instructions into a computer program. With all computers, the input must be in a form that can be handled rapidly and that the computer can recognize. A punched card is one widely used type of input, though there are others. One or more holes in different positions on the card can represent any numeral, letter or conventional sign. The computer program can be punched directly onto the cards by a machine which automatically converts ordinary text into the appropriate symbol. The cards can be fed into the computer extremely rapidly. The main memory or store of a computer consists of a matrix made up of a million or more tiny ring magnets. Each one can be magnetized by an electric current passing through it. By altering the direction in which the current flows, the core can be magnetized in one direction, that is, store a zero, or in the opposite direction, and therefore store a one. Such cores can store, or they can be read out, at almost the speed of light. The calculator, like all computer components, is a mass of electronic circuitry. It deals with electric pulses representing binary ones or zeros and can add, subtract, divide, multiply or make selections from any numbers. The function of the control unit is like that of the conductor of an orchestra. He brings each section or instrument in at the appropriate time but follows a score, in computer terms a program written in an appropriate code by another person. The computer output can be by means of a printer, which converts all the binary information into words or figures. But computers do many important jobs that need little actual output. They control industrial processes, for example, and keep records. In such cases, they only report exceptional or unusual facts. When the output is large, it can be on magnetic tape or magnetic discs are very convenient. Or the output can be punched cards. In some circumstances, it is more useful for the computer to actually show the results as a television type display. Or you can telephone the computer and listen to the appropriate recorded answer. The results produced are reliable because there are inbuilt circuits which cross-check every stage of the calculation. Speed, then, and the fact that it is automatic and reliable are the computer's two strong points. A major calculation might take an unaided man a year. A computer could do it in less than a second. So computers can solve, or at least help with, problems impossible for men because of the time involved. Nor indeed should men have to do such tedious work. But computers have no originality, no initiative. If a computer lands an aircraft, it is only because it has been precisely programmed to do so. A man's judgment can tell him immediately which of two or three alternatives will be the shortest route across a city. A computer would have to be programmed with the length of every road and its terminal points. It could then add up the thousands of alternative routes and select the shortest in a fraction of a second. But unless it was specifically programmed, it could never know that the riverside is beautiful and that this can make a journey seem shorter.
these children are going to grow up into a world in which the most important technological factor is the development and spread of computers. Yet already they are mastering all that a computer can ever know. How to read, how to do sums, how to group things together, how to weigh up numbers and decide which is the larger, how to select the correct shapes to fill empty slots, and finally, how to write. These are the only things computers can do. Anything more is done by the men and the women who write the programs. Our material world is entering a period of rapid change in which computers will increasingly affect all our lives. Already the people of one city have been polled as to their preferred living pattern for the end of the century. A computer produced this plan for a city of the future by processing the individual desires of half a million people for different types of homes, methods of transport, patterns of leisure and of work, together with the expected population growth and the resources available. But the computer could only offer a series of mathematical concepts. It is to the degree that we understand this powerful tool and how best to use it that we can gain the maximum possible benefit. For only men and women can ensure that this city of the future will be a place of beauty and tranquility. Thank you.